Welcome, my name is John Spangle. I've been making a series of videos on my page uh, talking about giving references to God and things he's done in my life. I'm a disabled veteran. I'm not able to uh, get out that much anymore, and I really don't attend church that much. So this is my opportunity to speak to others and talk to them about God's word and how important God is to me in my life and some of the stories that I've done. This video I'm going to talk about is, is about work ethics and what the Bible says about uh, how we should be and, and uh, discussing a little bit about ourselves. I like to start out with a story. I was in the uh, summer between my fifth and sixth grade as a young boy, and, and I've been detasseling corn in the summertime. I worked, uh, lived out in the country. I was a little country boy, and it was a lot of work, and, you know, like in the summertime, mowed lawns, and, and uh, you can see... I got some of my cats around playing games right now. It's late at night, so they're having fun. I, my wife and I have a lot of rescue cats we're taking care of, and they're just family. So they're, they're all over the place. I hate to close them off. They don't like it. I let them run loose, so I maybe jump around a little bit. But uh, as I say, and I probably got interrupted, I, I grew up in the country. It was about hard work. You know, summertime, you, you a decent detached of corn one year, and Worked melon fields a couple of years, plus some mowed lawns and, and build hay and worked around cows and everything. But the summer between my fifth and, and uh, sixth grade was, was the best lesson. I was working and I'd work six days a week. Well, come Saturday morning, everybody would watch, some of my buddies get to watch Saturday morning cartoons, and I want to be like the other kids. You know, I didn't get to get up early and watch Saturday Mark car cartoons. I was six o'clock getting on a, a bus with a bunch of people going to eat tassel corn. I work six days a week. So I had worked blisters while well, I worked blisters on my hand because I hate wearing the gloves. I was supposed to wear gloves and I hate wearing the gloves with the sweat and everything. And I made a bunch of blisters one week on my hands and told my mother about it. She said, I'll have to talk to your father. Well, she saw the blisters. I was getting ready to go to go to work and she's like, I'll have to talk to your father. Just go in the front room. Watch TV. Okay. So I get in there and watch TV and start watching cartoons. That this, this is going to be it. And then uh, my mother come back in the front room and I'm like, he's mad at me? No, he's not mad at you all. He, he's, he says, wait a minute, he's got something for you. Oh, sweet. So he's not mad. I get to watch cartoons. And he's going to give me something. I, I don't know what he's going to give me, but he said he had something for me. So in a minute, my mother comes in here and says, your dad wants to talk for you. He wants to surprise you with something. Awesome. You know, so I, I, I really got this pegged out now. So I go out there and I see my old hole that I use for uh, detasseling coal. I'm at corn and, and uh, leaning up against the workbench. And dad says, here you go. I was like, because he said, I got something for you. So I walked up to him real excited and he said, here you go. And gave me that, that hole, and I was like, this is my hole. And they had taped electrician tape all up and down the handle. It was smooth. And he said, uh, I know you don't like wearing the gloves because your hands sweat so much. Your mother said you get blisters. So I uh, taped this up so I wouldn't blister your hands so bad. So you need to hurry up and get on that bus and get out there and get to work. And I'm so thankful he did that. I know a lot of people would say that's cruel and and that's bad, especially because a lot of us young boys like that out in the country, we, work, we worked in the summertime. And a lot of people would be like, that's not the way to be. But that, that was the best lesson he gave me. And I was thankful. Because at the, at the end of the season, I saw I worked and, and helped my parents get, get my school supplies and my clothes. But I was always allowed to, to buy something for myself. Take money. I worked hard all summer. My money went to account, and then they showed me what I made. They showed me where this was going for school supplies, this was going for clothes, but I always had, and then sometimes when I was young, at first few jobs, they make a lot. They put money in there, but I always got money to spend on whatever I wanted. I remember one year, uh, eighth grade, I was working the melon fields that summer. Made a lot of money for me back then. I was able to pick some extra clothes and uh, after I got my school supplies and clothes, clothes and pick extra clothes and 
I thought it was cool because it got me a stereo system at the local Kmart store. And back then, it was a cassette player, uh, AM, FM radio cassette player. Speaker's about three foot tall. I thought that that was it back in the day. That was some awesome stuff. So I got that for my room and thought I was hip on that. But I wanted to look in God's Word and look at what what God says about the work ethics and the way we should be. I don't believe in handouts. I've never had handouts in my life. I live on disability right now because of my cancer. And that's something I talk to my wife a lot. And she understands. And Because up to now, now I've always worked. Matter of fact, I retired at 51 years of age. Not only did I work six days a week at a job, local factory, but I also uh, was in the military. Served in the military. I was eight years prior service full time. Then later I went to Army National Guard. So, of course, being an Army National Guard, I still... Had a full-time job, did Army National Guard, had a deployment, spent 15 months in a combat zone in uh, Iraq. That's one of the deployments I had. And uh, I had a deployment before that where I was overseas for about 15 months in the Air Force, one of the places I, I was located at. My voice had a strong sense. I'm thankful for my father because that's something he gave me was a strong sense of work. We were always working. No matter what, there's work to be done. You know, we grew up in the country and had a uh, burning stove. We had gas heat, but we also used those, that stove a lot to uh, eat our home. Help out because we couldn't afford it, the gas the whole year round. It was just too much in price. So I had a job of, in the summertime, among a lot of other things, chop the wood, stack the wood, and prepare for the winter. So it taught me a lot of things. I actually enjoyed it. I enjoyed the hard work. But like I said, with my disability now, I don't get to work as much. And you would think sitting around a house is great, and I, I don't like it. I'll, I'll have chronic pain. and I tried the other day to sneak and help my wife. She had got this uh, uh, faucet for the sink. I tried to get in there to just a couple screws and stuff to do, just to switch that out. I couldn't do it. I was agitated. And I tried it anyways because she was going to get somebody to put it in for us. But she wasn't looking. I tried it myself. wasn't a good idea. I was, I was down in the back for the rest of the day, even with my, my medications. So it's kind of hard to get to that point where you can't do it. It gets frustrating. But we start out in the, in uh, the Old Testament, and uh, I looked at the Exodus, twentieth chapter, verses eight through nine, where it talks about uh, God talks as up standard. The uh, twentieth chapter, Exodus talks about Ten Commandments. And also, uh, God talks about six days of labor, but seventh rest, keep it holy, was one of the commandments he had, keep the Sabbath. It's very important to work. Uh, God talks about creation, seven being the perfect number. Six days he created, and, and you look in Genesis, first chapter, it talks about the creation of, of the earth and what God created. And then on the seventh day, he rested and set that day up for holy holiness to be a remembrance for what he had done. And I believe that's the standard that he set for us in our lives. First Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable always, abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know it, that ye labor is not in vain and in the Lord. Like I said, I'm not able to get out and do as much. I still try the best of my ability to help out in the Lord's work or what I feel the Lord would want me to do. That's just why I'm doing the series of these videos. And everybody has their own talent. Some people can get on here and, and a lot better. I, I watch a lot of ministers on on the uh, Internet, and I, I just enjoy listening to some of them. They have the talent and skills. I'm not at that level, and I don't think I will be at that level, but I, I speak on the level I'm at to help pass the word on. 2 Thessalonians, 3rd chapter, verses through 16, uh, talks about work, working hard, don't live irresponsible. We're responsible for everything we do. I'm responsible for my family, taking care of my family, and that's something I've done. I'm, I'm a pat -ball. You know, I've got uh, two grandsons and a granddaughter I love so much. I have one, one grandchild. I don't know if it's a boy or girl. My, my daughter had a miscarriage. That child's up in heaven waiting for me. 
So I got a grandbaby in heaven I get to meet someday. Um, but I try to be responsible in everything I do. I teach my, I have two sons and a daughter and I try to teach them to be responsible in their lives. Second Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And studying's work, you know, we we do uh, work, you work a job, but you also, God wants you to study in his word every day. Sometimes we slack, and that's something that's, that's the reason why I'm doing these series of videos. It, it gives me a motivation to study more in God's word. And the whole purpose of these videos is to get someone to look at these videos, maybe evaluate themselves, look at their life. Uh, the topics I put here, are, some topics are easy, some are hard topics, that they'll get their own uh, opinions. Studying God word, God's word and find the answers for themselves. Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. That's one thing, especially in the military, I learned. People, you get a reputation, people learn the type of person you are. And you'd be surprised at how many people are watching you. I had someone years later, I went to memorial service for one of our soldiers. I had a young soldier that uh, was well, kind of wild. And he knew me. I always carried my, my Bible and my rucksack you know, when I was in infantry. And uh, I always always think of that because I was before then I was like, well, Lord, it doesn't matter to me because I took a break in service. Went in at older, older age back in the military. I'm like, I want to work with the young soldiers about to go overseas, but am I just doing what I need to be doing? God should, answers prayers and answers, shows you things. And I was at memorial service and this young man kept looking at me and he came up to me later and introduced me to his fiance. Told me he was going to work in missionary field. And uh, he looked at me and said, I listened to what you told me. So some, someone I have might have actually been a good influence for him. That matters. But like I said, uh, you got to live it. You just don't go to church on Sunday. Then during the week, act different. You're doing no good. You know, God sees who, sees who you are. And, and it's hard work, especially in this world, to uh, be strong and, and live by the faith and live a good guy of life. It's hard work taking care of family. And uh, being the right example for those family, for the family and everybody around you, and it's it's very hard work. Proverbs twelve eleven: He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that calleth vain persons is void of understanding. Also, two more verses in Proverbs thirteen four: The soul of the sluggard desire and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. And Proverbs fourteen twenty three: In all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tenneth only to printery. And Proverbs twenty one twenty five, desire of the slothful kills him, for his hand refused to labor. God I mean there's it's obvious. God commands us to work and work hard. Uh, every time I do these videos I try and make my videos short, very short, on purpose. I just want to touch base, so to speak, on the subjects that I give in the in so I don't get too long winded because I can easily go but when I originally took the verses I had two pages of nothing but verses out of the Bible that talk about this subject. And so instead I took about twenty, twenty or less just for a short period of time. Um we are commanded to work and Nothing in this life is easy. Nothing, nothing worth having is easy. Everything's work. Everything aspects. My wife and I were married eight years, divorced 13 years. We remarried again uh, back in 2009. So it's been being remarried for 10, last 10 years. And it's work. And marriage is work. We've been able to have forgiveness and work through our problems. A lot of that has to do with having three kids together. And uh, I've always was there for my kids. And we made mistakes. We failed. But we were able to work through that failure and be there for each other and work for each other today. And I'm very thankful for that, especially going through my cancer. My wife has been awesome. She's been there for me so much. But everything in her life is work. 
you know, people that go through school, you're going through your school before you learn how to do a job, that's work. Studying's work. Studying the Bible daily, praying daily, that's work. We're, we're to work in every aspect of our life. We're not to be sluggers, sluggish, or sloths. It says so in the Bible that, that he who is sloth or lazy has nothing, and it should be that way. Uh, nowadays, you talk about politics. There's a lot going on in this country coming up on an election next year, and one side of the politics are, are dealing with immigration. Or they're letting them come in and not working their way in. And you may say, well, these immigrants are coming in doing work, but they're not doing the correct work. And, you know, we were expected, you know, our country is full of immigrants, and they had a process they had to go through. They had to work through that process and show that they're positive for our country. A lot of these people are just coming in doing all kinds of crimes. They're not wanting to work. They just want to get in America and get free ride, get free this, free that, free school. I don't believe in free school. I think that's ridiculous. There's no reason for a person to have free school. You're not going to appreciate what you have. If something is given to you, you don't appreciate it. You've got to work for it. Even God tells you to work for what you have. And free ride for anybody or anything, I disagree. But you have to have a means for them to do it. Health care system is being redone over. Hopefully it will be better. Better than what it was. Obamacare killed this country on health care. Um, but you just got to work, work for what you have. And those people, um, if you need things taken care of, we have the opportunity, especially in this country. I've been all over the world. I've been third world countries. I've seen it where it's bad. I've seen where socialism is. I've been places where there's socialism and I'm totally against it. But it, it is coming. It's coming to this country. And that's... That breaks my heart. But if you truly follow God's word, you see that that's what's going to happen. Uh, that's the uh, socialism is part of the Antichrist. And that's the system that he's over. America will be socialist. That's why I'm thankful for the president of the United States at the moment, Donald Trump. God's putting him in that position. He's not a perfect man, far from it. But he's putting him in a position to help us because he's, he's the only one that stands up, would stand up against uh, socialism. He stands up against globalization which is another word, fancy word for New World Order, which is an Antichrist system. And uh, he's telling the truth when he says it's gotten in our country now, where you have the, the not saying that they're not bad Republicans, but you have the Republicans pushing one thing, and you have the Democratic side pushing the other, and they're pushing socialism and ungodly agenda. God wants us to work, we're to work. Under a socialist country, you'll be working, but you'll have nothing. And God's not like that. God throughout talks about rewards for working hard. You work hard, you'll have a reward for it. I've worked a lot of jobs through the years, and I've always had where I worked hard and I've got ahead or, or made a difference. Uh, one of the jobs I did for a lot of, yeah, about five years, five and a half years, uh, a few years ago, was working coal mine. I was an underground coal miner. Worked two different coal mines for Peabody Coal. And then the, the coal company uh, had some financial trouble, and they were cutting backs. And unfortunately, I was let go because I was working up in the maintenance, and I wasn't certified on anything. And, and uh, they had some people that had certifications, enough maintenance men with certifications because they were downsizing. And unfortunately, I was one of them that was let go. But I was called weeks ahead by the head of maintenance. But personally, he really liked me. I was a hard worker. Called me in his office, told me that they were going to let me go in a couple of weeks, but just give me a heads up. He uh, didn't want a lot of people know. Uh, he said he was talking with two, it was two or three other people he was going to talk to in a couple of days. And I said, well, it's not fair. You let me know, then I'll let them know ahead. I'm going to let them know. Uh, it's like a Wednesday or Thursday or one week. And he said that Monday I was going to let them know. And they're going to have some some time too, but I just want to let you know heads up. And so it gave me the opportunity to look for another job because I had a family to take care of. But I had, I had, when you walk out of that coal mine, out of the dark and you see the light, I'm just satisfaction. It's one of them jobs I worked at where I was just totally satisfied. I accomplished something every day. 
there was a challenge every day. I loved doing it. I liked, I wish I had done it earlier at a younger age. It's a very dangerous job, but it was just, I was just made to be a coal miner. To be honest, it was in my blood and I loved it. Remind me of the infantry. Uh, really, the respect you had of each other. When, when playing around, a lot of men have respect. A lot of men didn't last in the job. It's a very hard job, very physical job. And uh, a lot of young men couldn't do it, couldn't take it. I worked a lot of people that worked two or three days, just they're out, wouldn't deal with it. And it, you're, you're in the slop, you're in a dangerous area, working hard. And just, I enjoyed it. The brotherhood we had, remind me so much of the military, especially the infantry, the, the brotherhood we have. And that's why I enjoyed doing it. I've worked a couple other jobs. One of my favorite jobs, we years ago lived in Arkansas before we moved to Indiana. Now I live in Illinois. Was a Remington Arms ammunition plant in Lone Oak, Arkansas. That was a job I worked two and a half years at before we moved out, out here. And uh, I enjoyed that job. It was one of them jobs where you just work real hard. A lot of people respected the hard worker, and you guys accomplish something every day, and you, and you felt good about yourself. And that's and there's been jobs in the past that were not good jobs, but no matter what, even if it was a, I knew it was a, I wasn't going to be there forever. I was going to move on for some reason, wherever I'm at that job. I still gave 110 percent. You know, every every time I worked was a, uh, that's what God wants you to do. People reflect. And one thing I noticed about work, I've done more witnessing for God at a job than anywhere. Working with people, and you have a hard day at work and problems, and someone comes up to you and, and see you handle things a little different. I'm like, man, how are you calm? Or, you know, which is hard for me because I have temper. <laughs> That's something I've had to deal with all my life, try to control, and uh, a lot of prayer. And a lot of hard work and people just come up and and you start talking about things and it seems like that respect is there. I loved it in the military especially. Especially in the infantry. We get physical. Um, do combat training. Knock each other around and them young guys get, get the respect. It's total respect you have each other. But you have a strong worth ethic. I've used that everywhere in my life because I learned it young. I learned it from my father and that's the way my father was. Hard worker. And that's what he was all about. He was always working. And your joy comes through your work. You don't need to go off, run, and do this and that. You know, and hard work keeps, especially a young man, keeps a young man from getting in trouble. He's got things to do. Boredom is when you get in trouble. You get bored, you start doing things, and it's when, especially a young guy, get in trouble, get in fights or whatever, where you work, you're too tired to get in trouble. <laughs> you come home, you're tired, man. And that and God knows that. That's the reason why God put that there. Made it for you to work. I mean, in the Garden of Eden, Adam had the responsibility of the animals. That, what it talks about. He named named had the responsibility to name the kinds of animals. And even being in the Garden of Eden, he still had to have help. That's why Eve was made. But in Psalms uh, 121st chapter, verse 2. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. You work for something, you earn it, you have a pride for it. Uh, they talk about pride comes before fall, but that's a different kind of pride. You, you cherish what God gives you, you're thankful. You work hard during the week, you're thankful for on weekends. You, you gather, you, you're thankful to God for everything and just give thanks. And that's... The whole purpose of having a good work ethic is you're thankful to God. You appreciate what you have. It's not just given to you. It's not a free ride. There's too many people, especially young people in this country, want a free ride. They, they don't want to work, work hard for anything. And it's not going to satisfy them. If something's given to you, you don't respect it. You're not satisfied with it. You need to work for what you have. And that's what God meant for us to do. To work and work hard and I've had a lot of examples of that in my life and I'm thankful like I said that day that Saturday morning summer back in the early 70s and my father was like 
taped it up for you. There you go. <laughs> I'm so I'm so thankful. Now we talk about that every now and then. I visit it with him. Unfortunately, he's in a nursing home now. He he got to the point where he went nursing home because I couldn't. I took care of him for a while, and my wife and helped me. And my back's bad. I have a lot of physical problems now, so I can't lift him up. So he's about to be 86 years old. A couple more months. But I go over and talk to him every other day. I try to get there every other day and sit and talk with him. And that's something we always talk about, different things. And one is, is some of the work we used to do when I was younger, and he'd have me do. And, and uh, just good memories, a lot of good memories, a lot of hard work. My father was a hard worker. He was a fireman, put 35 years on the fire department. Uh he worked fire department one day and then go to his other job. He worked on a uh, small engine, so he worked at a lawnmower place. And then he come home, and he had a small business we did out of our garage around the country. His business would have picked up. I think we were way out in the country in the middle of nowhere. So if he was in town, which they moved in town. My mother always wanted to be in town. They moved in town years later after I went in the military and moved away. My, I have an older sister. I don't have any other brothers and sisters but one older sister and you know I was the last one out of the house so when, of course at 18 I went in the military so uh, I moved away went overseas right off the back came home when I was in my 20s and they had already moved into town mom was happy that's where she wanted and so the older homestead he, he got rid of it's a lot of hard work living out in the country keeping the house warm in the winter time doing things around there we had uh, two acres of land that we were constantly, you know, we had to mow. I had a lot of mowing jobs when I was a young man. Back in the day, when you mowed, worked hard. Uh, so four weed eaters. Then, so I'd get on the ground and take scissors and on my hands and knees after I mowed the grass. I had two or three houses of women that worked at our church, I mean, went to our church. I cut their lawns and i get on my hands and knees and cut that Cut that grass around there. I remember uh, one of the older ladies, Thelma Hoffman, she'd always have, most time it's lemonade, iced lemonade for me or, or iced tea. I cut her yard. I had to go in there and sit and have a couple of drinks. She'd be offended if I didn't. So I, I cut her yard. And uh, for five years, I cut the church yard that we were at. And that was an all-day job. And when I got older, I started cutting that. And... I got, I got to enough where I got enough yards cutting that I, I didn't have to work out in the fields. So I was cutting yards, but I still, in the, towards the fall time, uh, bailed hay every now and then, helped build hay. Good work. I remember going to my friend's house, Tony, and we they had some cows, so we done things like bill hay, stand in cow manure up to our knees with waist, with waiter boots on so we could slush and shove that stuff out. I remember getting a few fights with that, just throwing that cow manure on each other. <laughs> Being doing crazy things like that. But it was worth it. Everybody I would I knew back then, you go over and visit, spend time with a friend. Most of the times they own farms. So if you're gonna be with them, you're gonna have to help them do their chores and do the work. So I'm thankful for you listening to this video. Hopefully you took something out of here. And I pray that you Take, take the time to look at God's word and, and just look, look look at yourself about look uh trying to say is uh look at God's word and, and study his word and look where it says about worth ethics and, and the way to be and remember that's the place to witness as a Christian you're to witness for God and that's what your life's all about and that's the place to do it not not everybody and I'm not I have a lot of people I know in the ministry, but we have different positions in life. Not everybody's going to be a minister behind a pulpit. Some people are a Sunday school teacher. Some people just living the Christian life, living good, working at this factory or working at this uh, uh, other job or, or at a hospital or being a warrior or something. And you affect the people around you. And that's that's what it's all about. And so uh, God love you and bless you and thank you for listening to this video.